TikTok has been crucial in your in your journey. Um, so mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about how you even thought of, okay, let me start to get my music out on platforms like TikTok. My plan was, okay, if I ever matter someday, I'm probably going to want to have been posting this whole time so that fans will have something to go back and look at. I never like really had the foresight to think about using it on purpose. And my little sister was like, aren't you writing songs all the time? Why aren't you posting them on TikTok where people can hear them? Because I send them to her, but she wanted me to show them to people. And so she helped me film the very first one when she was in Nashville. And I was like, let's call it Songs I Forgot I Wrote because you just write so many and a lot of them slip through the cracks. And it kind of backfired in the best way because one that I forgot I wrote went crazy and got all of these people. And I was like, well, that's not one I want to put out, which is why I had forgotten about it because it's not one that I love. And so then it became, okay, well, how do we give people this music without releasing it? And how do we keep a fan base around and start giving them more unreleased music? What age, Peyton, did you start writing songs? As far as like intentionally sitting down and trying to write something, it was probably 12 around the time Taylor Swift came out. I was like, I think I could do this. I look at her like a case study. I'm, I've got a degree in public relations. And so I love the marketing strategies behind anything, but especially the way that she's handled her career and how we're like, Swifties are doing crosswords trying to figure out what's gonna be on her record. Like not many artists have a grip on their fans like she does. Um, and songwriting, I mean, She's just incredibly talented. Let's talk about your new project. Um, can you kind of just tell me a little bit about it and what we can kind of expect? You can expect some things that have been on TikTok, which I'm really excited about to give people final and full versions of things that they latched onto from that platform. You can also expect some new stuff and it's, it's pretty emotion packed project, I would say, and complex ones at that, not just happy, sad, love, mad. It's it's kind of layered versions of all of the feelings that we experience. Um, there's live songs like First Stone. Okay, so First Stone, that one, we'll talk about that first. It's a little more upbeat. Um, and can you just talk about the storyline behind that song and writing that song? First Stone was just about wanting people to get along. Well, I grew up in the middle of three girls, so my older sister and little sister required a lot of attention and I got moved into the basement when I started writing songs because it was just unnecessary sound. <laughs> um, so I've always been the peace keeper of the family. I like would pop up from upstairs and be like, why are we fighting? Like, let's all watch a movie. And um, so First Stone definitely comes from that. But then on the other side, the flip side, you have therapy, which I feel like really just like talks to you. If that's whether you're in that phase in life or not, I feel like we can all relate to that. Mm -hmm. um, was that song hard for you to write? Or I guess just were all the emotions so high at one point? Yes, that song, we wrote it and I had just gone through this terribly toxic relationship. And I was like, I'm parking in all of these empty parking spots until it doesn't hurt to be there anymore. And so I would go to the place where I would sit on my phone wondering where he was at and I would just cry and cry and cry and then be like, okay, this is just a pizza place now. And then I'd move to the next and I'd be like, we kissed there in the rain and now it's just a bar. And I just kind of reclaimed all of these spots around Nashville. And so I was telling them that and I was like, I can't afford therapy, I'm in college, but this is my version of it, is taking back all of these things that I felt like he had taken from me. I don't want anyone else singing this song. This is such a piece of me that I have to share this with the world. Being nominated for iHeartRadio's TikTok Songwriter of the Year. First of all, can you tell me what your reaction was when you even heard of that? And then secondly, just what it meant to you. It was exciting. And to me, I mean, it's one thing to be nominated for a TikTok award. It's another to be nominated as a songwriter for a TikTok award. And that's what meant the most to me. Uh, Peyton, mm -hmm. what about looking forward? Uh, what do you foresee in your future? If you were to kind of look at the next five to 10 years? Definitely a full length album or two, if we're talking five years. I would love to, um, go to the Grammys. I'd love to win a Grammy. I'd love to meet every single fan who listens to any second of my song and hug them and hear their experience, bringing people together. You have like 
something someone doesn't know or if there's a little secret that you haven't shared yet. Oh, I got in trouble for this this morning. My curls, which people ask me a lot about, but I usually do it with a straightener, which is really bad. So that's my dirty secret. I curl my hair with a straightener. <laughs> Thank you, Payne. I'm excited to see CMA Fest for you. I think that'll be awesome. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you.